That's the last thing I think we have to do okay. before we get started. Yeah. But you I'm can open them out. I think you should. Yes. Okay. And then Mama called to a call to protest, fire, glass, say their names, say their names. White silence equals violence. I found myself drawn to Claudia Rankine's text because the word weather, first of all, is a very striking word. It's a contradiction. pandemic, everyone, not just the philosophers. 
is without. We scramble in the drought of information held back by inside traders, drop by drop, face covering. Yeah, which basically means that it's a word that can have dual meanings and those meanings can be total in total opposition to one another. And so weather, of course, means to wither or to be worn away, but it also means to
as we transition, uh, I'd like to welcome you and thank you to, uh, for coming out to Queens College. This was a combined performance of our vocal ensemble as well as the treble chorus. Uh, uh, the vocal ensemble is under the direction of Dr. J James John, Jim, and uh, my name is Morgan Jolly and it is my joy and pleasure to be here. We are about to sing a piece called Song of Miriam. And this, this selection has a, a double meaning. Um, so you'll hear about Miriam, Miriam, Moses's and Aaron's sister. And Miriam went before Moses. She is his older nurturing sister that protected Moses and loved Moses through all of his tribulations and trials uh, in the Old Testament. Miriam, went forth with timbrels after Moses was set, baby Moses was set in the basket and left to go down the Nile. The double meaning about this story of Miriam is that there is another person that went before somebody who got a lot of fame and attention for standing up for something. And that person that, that came after was Rosa Parks. But the person that came before was Claudette Colvin. And she, 10 months prior to Rosa Parks um, standing her ground on the bus that started the civil rights movement, Claudette was a 15-year-old girl. And she did this first. And the civil rights movement said, she's a young lady. She's too young to be the, the face of our movement. And so Rosa Parks came 10 months later. So please enjoy Song of Miriam with a tribute to Claudette as well.
Hello, everyone. I'm Micah. I am a freshman here at Queens College, and I'm going to give you some context for our next song. So, our next song is called Lifeline, written for the movie musical The Color Purple by Alicia Keys. Our arrangement is arranged by Nick Powers. We commissioned this song because if you look over the past four years, when we were all isolated in this pandemic, we saw a quite apparent devastation that revealed itself to us when everyone was sitting at home watching by themselves. And so it is a human instinct then to create a community, to stand and say, we are not alone, to look at each other and remember that we have similarities amongst our differences. And so a hopeful reprieve from the previous repertoire and the theme of our concert is that amongst the change that we need to initiate amongst these divisive times, we hope that you can reach out a hand to your fellow human being and say, I see you. We can be lifelines for each other.
At this time, uh, we are going to take a brief intermission. Please be back in your seats uh, in just a few moments. And I would like to also acknowledge our beautiful soloist from the Schubert Kyrie. Selena, will you stand up, please? <laughs> We'll be back in just five minutes.
my mentor, one of my mentors, this mic, okay, one of my mentors before he passed away in 2017, he said, make a better world. And um, I think that's what we're doing every time we, we sing, uh, every time we connect, every time we, we make art. Um, so we have two poems by Langston Hughes. Um, I'd, like to do, I'd like to read you the text. They're in your program, but sometimes the spoken word, uh, it's just nice to hear the spoken word first. The Dream Keeper. Bring me all of your dreams, you dreamers. Bring me all of your heart melodies that I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth away from the two rough fingers of the world. Democracy. Democracy will not come today, this year, nor ever through compromise and fear. I have as much right as the other fellow has to stand on my two feet and own the land. I tire so of hearing people say, let things take their course. Tomorrow is another day. I do not need my freedom when I'm dead. I cannot live on tomorrow's bread. Freedom is a strong seed planted in a great need. I live here too. I want freedom just as you.
So I, I'd also like to introduce, while we're changing the stage here, I want to give you a little context for our next piece, Weather, Stand the Storm. So it came, it came about that we're doing this. Uh, we, we were invited, I got a call in, in December, we were invited to join in a performance in Carnegie in April. Uh, of this piece. So the, the piece is for, uh, it could be done in a variety of ways. It can be done with a full wind ensemble of 30 or more instruments. It can be done with piano and winds in a chamber version, or it can be done just with piano. So in Carnegie, we were invited to do it with a composer at the piano, uh, with a small uh, chamber wind ensemble, um, and a large group of high school choirs from around the country. So on April 26th. So this is our first um, first performance of the piece here, we're doing it for ourselves. So, um, I would, as we approached this piece, um, we, we talked about it one day in rehearsal and, the, and I, I said to, you know, art can serve many functions. It can serve as entertainment, it can serve as, um, many different things, but it's one thing, it does not have to make us comfortable. And this piece really, uh, well, I'll say it this way. So uh, the composer speaks uh, about the piece, he speaks about art as serving different functions. It can serve as a window into your own soul. It can serve as a window into another's soul. Um, sometimes it can also serve as a sliding door that we can step through and we can, for a short time, put ourselves in another person's shoes. And that's one of the things where we're going with this piece, trying to, to put ourselves in the shoes of others, those less fortunate than our, our, ourselves, or seeing from a different perspective. It can open those doors to us. And a, a final way is it can also <clears throat> serve as a window into the future, how we can work together to create a better world. And uh, that's another message of this piece. So in a moment, um, we're gonna play a video of the poet, Claudia Rankine, who's a professor at Yale University. She's gonna read the poem. And then a short video of the composer speaking about the piece. I also wanted to read you a little bit from the introduction of the piece itself, because it's very meaningful uh, what the composer says about when he wrote, when and how he wrote this. Um, so just to bear with me, I think it's worth hearing the first couple paragraphs here. May 25th of 2020 was a memorial day that took on new meaning for not just those who were citizens of the United States of America, but also for citizens around the world who witnessed the murder of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer. The institutional marginalization of black people in the US has been a part of the nation's history since the first enslaved Africans arrived on its shores in 1619. While black, brown, indigenous, and people of color, BIPOC, have experienced some levels of educational, economic, and social advancement in this country, George, George Floyd's murder was a wake-up call to many, confirming that much work still needs to be done if America is to live up to its creed that, pro that proclaims all are created equal, and its promise of liberty and justice for all. The death of George Floyd soon became a defining moment in the discourse on systemic racism, racism and social injustice. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, people from all walks of life have sought both personal and public ways to respond to this traumatic and tragic event. Individuals and institutions around the world have been inspired to take a closer look at themselves, to seek a deeper understanding of the dynamics of racism and bias and their effect on the present, and to take purposeful actions that promote a more just society. Historically, the arts have always fulfilled the dual roles of responding to change while at the same time creating change. Weather is a poem that gives voice to the voiceless, especially those who have been and continue to be marginalized because of difference. It responds to and reflects realities that are both culturally specific and humanly universal, 
Professor Claudia Rankine challenges all of us, no matter your background or lived experience, to know better, to do better, to take action, and to become agents of social justice and social change. So now we'll hear Claudia Rankine read the poem. Weather on a scrap of paper in the archive is written, I have forgotten my umbrella. Turns out in a pandemic, everyone, not just the philosopher, is without. We scramble in the drought of information held back by inside traders, drop by drop, face covering. No, yes, social distancing, six feet under for underlying conditions, black, just us and the blues kneeling on a neck with the full weight of a man in blue, eight minutes and 46 seconds in extremis. I can't breathe, gives way to asphyxiation, to giving up this world and then mama, Call to, a call to protest, fire, glass, say their names, say their names. White silence equals violence. The violence of again, a militarized police force, tear gassing, bullets, ricochet, and civil unrest, taking it, burning it down, whatever. Contracts keep us social compel us now to disorder the disorder peace we're out to repair the future there's an umbrella by the door not for yesterday but for the weather that's here i say weather but i mean a form of governing that deals out debt and names it living i say weather but i mean a november that won't be held off this time, nothing, no one, forgotten. We are here for the storm, that storming, because what's taken matters. And now we'll hear uh, from uh, Rallo Dilworth about his piece, about five minutes he speaks uh, a video. And maybe, um, you know, so, the, the, so we have a smooth transition. Why don't uh, uh, choir, treble choir and, and vocal ensemble come on up on stage now. I think then we can go right from the video into the piece, which would be great. Uh, so we'll do that and then we'll, we'll hear from uh, the composer. Okay, Carlos, I think you can go ahead. Hello, my name is Rollo Dilworth. I'm a composer, conductor, and educator. I am honored to have had the opportunity to write this piece entitled Weather. It is a setting of a poem bearing the same title by Professor Claudia Rankine of Yale University. I found myself drawn to Claudia Rankine's text because the word weather, first of all, is a very striking word. It's a contronym, which basically means that it's a word that can have dual meanings, and those meanings can be total in 
total opposition to one another. And so weather, of course, means to wither or to be worn away, but it also means to withstand, uh, to, to resist to some degree. And I found that the word weather was very appropriate in describing the human condition on so many levels. I'm really excited to use an African American spiritual entitled Stand the Storm as a way of connecting with this theme called weather. So you'll actually, when you listen to the piece, you'll actually hear this theme occur many times, uh, either in part or in whole. It happens in its entirety, I think, three times in the piece. And so the melody is very simple. Do you want to bring the screen up, Carlos? Yeah. Okay.
George Floyd. George Floyd. Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor. Ahmad Armory. Arbery. Dante Wright. Tyree Nichols. Sandra Bland. Freddie Gray. Philando Castile. Eric Garner. Miani Finlayson. Tamir Rice. Michael Brown. Michael Brown. Elijah McLean. Elijah McLean. Botham Jean. Botham Jean. Alton Sterling. Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin. Tatiana Jefferson. Tatiana Jefferson. Laquan McDonald. Laquan McDonald. Michael Jenkins. Eddie Parker. Eddie 